Minimaps are something that require a little bit of trickery to get working correctly. In this video, we're going to see how I implemented this using UI Toolkit in the free and open source micro game Chicken Defense. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dream become a reality by helping you implement some magic into your game. When I first started looking at implementing a minimap years and years ago, I had no idea how it would work. Literally, I had no idea. I had to Google and get found out that we use render textures to achieve this, which means it's luckily not super hard to do. It just is a little bit of magic to understand the trickery behind the scenes. That means that we don't have to do anything really different between UI Toolkit and UGUI. So essentially, a minimap is just having a camera above the level, looking down, rendering the output of that camera to a texture. That's why we call it a render texture. That camera can exclude things like showing player models, for example, and maybe you have some special things in your scene that only show up for that camera, so you can get that nice minimap looking feel. In UGUI, you just slap a render texture onto an image and you're good to go. UI Toolkit works very similarly, where we slap the render texture onto a visual element and we're good to go. Of course, there are some gotchas along the way, and we'll cover many of those in this video. If you want to follow along, you can download the full Chicken Defense project off from GitHub for free, and you can, of course, play it on Itch for free as well. Let's get started. Down here at the bottom left, you can see we have a mini map where we can see the camera bounds, all of the units show up, our enemy snake comes by. We can see the trees, and very importantly here, we do not see the models we have instead of some kind of UI representation. We come over to the scene view and come above the level. We can see how that's happening. Above each unit, we have some little UI thing. We also have this line render showing where the camera is looking. And if we look at that, we see we have a layer called UI render only. That means that if we look in our hierarchy, find our main camera, we have the ability to toggle on some layers that will be rendered and off some layers that will not. That's via the culling mask. So this main camera renders everything except UI render only. That's why we don't see the line renderer. And we also will never see these UI icons about the snake and the fox and eggs and whatever. We also have this mini map camera and this configuration is going to be very important. The culling mask. We can see default, some transparent effects, some other stuff. Importantly, floor and UI render only. So we're not going to render any llamas, chickens, enemies, camera clip, anything like this. We're only going to show a very small set of things. Now also notice that we're using a different renderer. We're using the URP performant renderer instead of the high fidelity renderer. So we're not going to use things like anti-aliasing. We're not going to render shadows. Let's actually go take a look at that. If you created a project using the URP template, you get all of these out of the box. I have changed the shadows so it doesn't render shadows only as one cascade. We've got a lot of stuff turned off like anti-aliasing. You can also play with your render scale if you want it to be a more aliased look. And we can also use a cheaper rendering path like forward plus instead of deferred. The configuration of this isn't super duper important, you can even get away using your same high fidelity renderer. It's just going to be more expensive. So if you end up having some performance issues, you may consider tweaking these. I don't want to go into the whole how do you optimize your URP settings in this video. If that is something you're interested, let me know in the comments and maybe we can take a look at that. So back to the camera, we've got anti-aliasing turned off. Importantly, we're using orthographic projection instead of perspective. If you look at this little main camera preview, we get a very different look for these. The orthographic makes it where we have a square basically, and we're rendering it to a texture. So down here at the very bottom, we have the output going to a minimap render texture and the settings that you set up on this texture will control the look of what's rendering here. So this texture I have at 1024 by 1024. That's why it shows up as a square. If we change this to like 2048, You'll see the preview changed. Now our camera is rendering a rectangle. So depending on how you set up your render texture, it'll change the output of that camera. If you have never created a render texture before, you can just right click, create, render texture. 
all of this is pretty much the default. We've got enable compatible format. So that way Unity will choose a format that works on our target platform. We definitely want it to be a 2D texture. We've upped the size to 1024 by 1024. We don't have any anti-aliasing and the rest of the stuff we don't really need to worry about too much. Our minimap camera is positioned high above the scene. And then all of these objects are rendering something above them that's getting rendered by that camera. The level is larger than what the camera can see. In fact, if we turn on gizmos, you can see the box that's rendering. And we just have basically a collider on the outside of the level that roughly corresponds to what the minimap camera can see. I didn't do a great job at aligning those. You can see there's some gap here. So there's a little bit of space where you can go outside of the bounds of the minimap camera. That's really something I should bring those in to align perfectly with the bounds of the minimap camera. So that's how we get something to display onto the UI. We have a texture. This is the key piece. The key output that we get is this camera, whatever it's seeing, instead of rendering it on screen, we're rendering it to a texture. Now we can take that texture and display it here on our UI. So I'm using UI Toolkit. And as I said earlier, it works basically the same as using UGUI. We have a UI Builder. I use the UI Builder instead of using just the UXML. I find it to be a little bit easier. Well, less writing at least. So on this, we just have a minimap. It's a simple visual element. I gave it a little border, two pixels of this orange color so we can see the bounds of it. And just above the border, we have background. And very importantly, you set the image type to be render texture. There's also texture, sprite, and vector. You can't assign the texture if you don't call it render texture. So that's very important. And then you just click on this little dot and your render texture will show up there. White's probably what you want to show up so it doesn't tint it at all. That's really it to get your minimap camera showing. But you know we don't only do the basics here. You can actually interact with this minimap. We can click and drag to move around on the minimap. This is very common minimap behavior in games like RTS style games, MOBAs, basically anything that's not an FPS style game. You can usually click and drag and move around on the minimap. So how do we do that? In a runtime UI class, which is really just like manager for how I show things on the UI, which I'm going to cover in a different video. So for anyone you watch that, I may have a link in the description to how this is set up fully. We're going to focus only on the minimap portion. So we're going to have a reference to the minimap. That's just the visual element. So that's going to be the thing that has a background we just looked at. And we're going to have a bool is the mouse down on the minimap. On awake, we're going to set up a minimap click config. We'll find the minimap by name, minimap. We're going to get a floor layer to be layer mask, get mask from the floor because we're going to raycast from the camera only on the floor layer. And the floor should be totally covering what the minimap camera can see. We're then going to register callbacks on the visual element to handle when we click, move, let go, and when we've moved the mouse out of this visual element's bounds. This way we don't have to like pull every frame what's going on with the mouse. We can just get the events when the mouse is already over this visual element. That's really cool. We'll go in order when we click down. So that's when we left clicked. We're going to set mouse down and money map to be true. And we're going to move the virtual camera target based on this mouse position. So the virtual camera target is what our main camera is looking at. We're going to move it based on the mouse position. We're going to take the minimap camera scaled pixel width and height and divide that by the minimap layout width and height. And we want to use the minimap camera scaled pixel width and height instead of screen width and height because this minimap camera renders to a texture. If you try to just pull the screen width and height, which is what we usually do when we're trying to convert from screen space to world space, you get really bad results because it's not the full screen. It's only that 1024 by 1024 texture that we're dealing with. And that's what we get on these two values. And we need to scale it down based on the size of our visual elements width and height. In this case, uh, I actually have a bug. This should be also height. Since I happen to have a square minimap, it didn't really matter. But if you have a non-square one, you want to make sure you go by the height. We then convert the mouse position by mouse position X times the width multiplier. And I'm using screen height here because we have this anchored to the bottom left. And our mouse position and our screen space positions are a little bit backwards. The mouse position Y is tied to the top left instead of the bottom left. So we need to take the full screen height since we have it bound to the bottom left. 
and subtract out the mouse position Y. If you have your minimap in a different location on screen, you're going to need to play with what you use for X and Y here. We then get a ray from the minimap camera based on our converted mouse position and then ray cast down from the camera to the floor using that floor layer. And hopefully we find a hit point, which if our level is constructed like this one, where this ray cast will always find a point beneath the minimap camera, then this works perfect. If we come back up, the second point is if we move the mouse within the visual element for the minimap, if we're left clicking, then we want to move that virtual camera target. And if we leave the bounds of the visual element or we let go of the left mouse button, we're going to set mouse down on minimap to be false. That gives us our ability to move around very easily by clicking on the minimap using the event callbacks that we get from UI Toolkit. It gives our players a lot of control and very easy panning around in the scene. I hope seeing the full configuration of a minimap, the camera, the layers, all the extra stuff you can put into the scene to make it look a little bit nicer, really helps you with your game. If you want to see more about how UI Toolkit was used in this micro game, let me know in the comments down below and I can take a look at making some of those videos. If you got value out of this video or any of the videos in the series where I cover all of these different things from Chicken Defense, make sure that you've liked and subscribed to show your support and help the videos reach more people. There's a few other ways you can support if you're interested. You can go to the Lom Academy merch store to get yourself some merch. All of the shirts and hoodies there are made with organic materials, minus one. They didn't offer that one in organic material, sadly. And they're all sustainably sourced. You can, of course, also donate on itch if you are getting a lot of value out of the game. You can use the affiliate links down in the description for both Humble Bundle and the Unity Asset Store. Both of those give me a small percentage of purchase price at no additional charge to you. And of course, you can become a Patreon supporter or YouTube member. Both of those will get your name up here on the screen. At the end of every video, you'll get access to a member exclusive Discord where we talk about things like how's your game going? Ask me questions about anything that's on your mind and some sneak peeks at some things I'm working on in the background. If you choose to support at the awesome tier or higher, you'll get a shout out at the end of every video like these awesome folks. Ivan, Ifiabolus, Perry, and Mustafa. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.